Hello, I'm Tony. And I'm Deborah. Welcome to the Barty Chronicles. We decided to put this channel together so we can share with you the many things we've learned throughout our lives. We hope to show you everything from making a knockout vegan curry to repairing a rotten sash window, although I did save that one for you. Thank you. I can't wait for that. Welcome. We've also included a few rather creative projects just for the hell of it. And don't forget to watch through to the end as we've included a few outtakes. Yes, there are a few. <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more from this channel. Oh, right. Let's crack on. Let's go. Today's video and the first for this channel is how to make six bottles of fine white wine using a carton of fruit juice, five inexpensive ingredients and a pinch of patience. No particular skills are needed as most of it is weighing the ingredients, measuring the fluids and keeping everything as clean as possible. There are three stages to the process. This video is about the very first one. Let's see what we need. First, the ingredients, the juice. This, as you can see, is apple and mango, but you can use any juice, really. We have found, though, the pulpier the fruit, the better. We've had a lot of success using mango and papaya. It makes an absolutely wonderful wine. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get any during lockdown. We use all of this carton. Sugar. Not a lot to say about this, only that you don't need to buy special brewing sugar as any white granulated sugar will do. We'll use 800 grams from this one kilo bag. Food grade citric acid. The yeast needs this to develop and thrive, especially making wine from non-acidic fruits. We'll use a level teaspoon of this. Pectolase. This helps to prevent possible pectin hazes, although when using juice from a carton you can get away with leaving this out. I like to use a teaspoon of it anyway. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeast nutrient. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it seems to make the yeast more active and generally produces a drier wine. We'll use one little teaspoon of this. And of course, last but not least, the yeast, brewing yeast in fact. This is what turns almost all the sugar into alcohol, or we hope so. This time we'll use one rounded teaspoon in the mix. Now let's look at what else we need. As you can see, you need very little equipment. This five litre glass container is known as a demijohn. Now, why it's called a demijohn, I have no idea, but perhaps if you do, you might like to leave us a message in the comments. They cost around about seven pounds to buy. This is a plastic airlock. It's also known as a fermentation lock. Now its purpose is twofold. First of all, it allows for the release of the carbon dioxide during the fermentation process. And secondly, it prevents any bugs or microorganisms from getting inside. We prefer to use plastic. We've tried glass, but found that it's too fragile. And these cost about two pounds. Uh, these are sterilizing tablets, the kind that you, you would use for sterilizing your baby's bottles. Just one of these is enough to sterilise both the demijohn and the airlock. You'll need a saucepan with a capacity for at least two litres um, in which we dissolve the sugar into the water and a couple of funnels. The large one is for pouring your sugar water and your juice into the demijohn and the smaller one for pouring your yeast. And last of all, you just need your regular little teaspoon so that you can measure your smaller ingredients. And hopefully this will all become clear as we move through the video. Now for the fun bit. This whole process should take less than an hour, a small price to pay for six bottles of delicious wine. Our first job is to sterilize the demijohn and the airlock with the sterilizing tablets that Deborah mentioned earlier. We need a tumbler of warm water for the airlock and we need to half fill the demijohn with warm water. We just remove the sterilizing tablet and we need to break this in two and then half again we put the smaller piece in the tumbler give it a bit of a stir 
and then we put the three other bits in the demijohn. Now we let these dissolve completely before we do anything else. Once the sterilizing tablets are completely dissolved, top up the demijohn right up to the top. The airlock needs to be sterilized on the outside and also on the inside. And we do that like this. We are using a pipette. Sometimes it just needs a little help. We will actually leave the sterilizing fluid in here because it's the water that acts as a trap, as you can see, this little U-bend here. Now we leave this for about 15 to 20 minutes. Thank you, Tony. Take a measuring jug with approximately 300 milliliters of warm water. Now into this, we place a teaspoon each of the pectolase, the citric acid, and the yeast nutrient. And we stir this until all of the crystals have dissolved. That's perfect. Next, fill the saucepan with two litres of warm water. You can either use water from the kettle or warm the saucepan on the hob. Whatever method you use, just make sure that the water is not too hot or the heat will destroy the yeast. You pour in 800 grams of sugar and you stir until all of the sugar has been dissolved. Have a go. Just keep stirring. Oh, good. I think that's just about done now. There. And now we're ready to put everything together. First, we pour the liquid from the measuring jug into the demijohn, followed by the juice from the carton.
Um, now we're ready to put in a rounded teaspoon of the brewing yeast using this small funnel. Next, pour the sugar water into the demijohn, topping up with cold water, leaving a fairly large airspace. Pulpy fruits, like mango, tend to froth up in the first week, and the liquid can force its way up through the airlock. Very messy. It's not a problem. Once the fermentation has calmed down, it can be topped up. Oh, could you come round and give me a hand, please, Tony, with a funnel? Of course I can. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, so two-handed. You're right. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. Oh, stronger than you look. <laughs> Tony was just a little quick there with the funnel. We need to place it back in and top up with some more cold water, just a little bit, to about, about here. There we go. And finally, you just need to give the airlock a little rinse off in cold water, which we've already done, before placing it into your demijohn and giving it a firm squeeze down. And there we are. I think that's secure. There we have it. It's been about 24 hours since we made this, and things are really begin to happen. The yeast is consuming the sugar with real gusto, um, more than we've ever seen um, in such a short space of time. You can probably hear the airlock plopping away in the background as I speak. If I get, if I take the little cap off, bring the microphone closer, you'll probably hear it. The fermentation process can take between one and two months longer depending on what juice you've used. It will eventually slow down as the yeast munches through all the sugar and turns it to alcohol. It's a good idea to keep the demijohn covered during the fermentation process. You can either wrap a towel around it or make a special cover like we have here. Um, we, we made this out of some old curtain material. I mentioned earlier in the video that there are three stages to the winemaking process. The first we covered in this video. There are two others, racking and bottling. One is self-explanatory, the other you may not be familiar with. When the fermentation begins to slow, the liquor inside the demijohn will clear, leaving a thick, cloudy sediment at the bottom. Simply put, racking is the process we use to separate the two by decanting the liquor from one demijohn and putting it into another one. And this, is what you'll be left with. This one is almost ready for bottling. We'll cover both of these stages in future videos. Well that's about all from us this week. Uh, there's just a couple of things though that I forgot to mention earlier. The first was that after sterilising the demijohn you need to give it a good rinse through at least a couple of times in cold tap water. Also to remember to keep this little cap in place as it will prevent any bugs from entering the airlock. Yeah because those uh, little bugs they seem to like the smell of alcohol don't they? <laughs> they do, they do. Uh, also remember to keep a little label on your demijohn with the date and the type of juice or wine that you're making. Yes um, and uh, if you do have a go at this uh, for yourselves please leave us a comment and tell us how you get on. Oh that would be great. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and we hope to see you soon. Yes, yes we will. Um, don't forget to uh, watch for a few minutes more just to see the outtakes. Uh, they're worth watching. <laughs> Goodbye.
Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Is how to make six bottles of fine white wine using a carton of orange juice. Orange juice. This five litre glass container is known as a demijohn. Now why it's called a demijohn, I have no idea, but perhaps if you do, you might like to leave us a comment in the messages. Um, this is a plastic airlock known as... Comment in the messages. <laughs> I've done it again. Yeah. I've done it again. <laughs> This is a glass five litre container known as a demijohn. Now why it's called a demijohn, I have no idea, but perhaps if you do, you might like to leave us a comment in the message. No. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to put this channel together so we can share with you all the things. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to show you everything from repairing. Repairing? Repairing, not a vegan curry then. Repairing a curry. <laughs> now for the fun bit. This whole process. Oh, God, it's your nose. <laughs> <laughs>